What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So in my previous video, uh, I was reacting to WWE changing or rewriting their own history, and we we got to the subject of the Chris Benoit uh, situation and how WWE is completely distanced themselves from uh, even acknowledging the wrestler at all in like any of their previous videos or segments and or anything of that ma of that matter. They just completely pretend like he didn't exist or whatnot and uh we started having well i started having uh uh like a i guess a conversation within that video and uh you know i wanted to see if you guys would be interested in it and a uh, few got few you guys are uh, definitely uh comment on that video wanting me to talk about and give my just my overall opinion of the whole situation should chris benoit be uh i guess remembered for his career outside of his heinous acts that uh he um he ended up doing towards the end of his life and first things first i want to just talk about my experiences in in relation to how i viewed chris benoit as a wrestler before all this went down i will say this um watching him or whatnot i you could you could tell you know he he just had this presence of just someone that you knew could bring could offer something to wwe especially in the technical sense the dude was fantastic in the ring he made you believe the moves he was doing he was sacrificing his body with those diving head butts over and over and over they always look brutal they always look pretty painful and enjoyed the feuds he had i enjoyed the little feud he had with the rock you know they were going back and forth it was just it was one of those things where it was a treat to be able to watch him wrestle and him winning the world heavyweight championship uh against triple h and uh, i believe hbk was in that match i believe it was a triple threat match him winning the world heavyweight championship alongside uh eddie guerrero winning a wwe championship the same night it was a beautiful moment that was a beautiful moment and it was cool to see you know the rabbit wolverine he literally came off like a a wolverine man he was just just ready to rip anybody apart and you knew he had the skills to do it so i always appreciated his in ring work um, that is that is one thing i can you know i'm, I'm going to state but we got to talk about obviously what happened um first things first you know losing eddie the way eddie ended up passing it hurt a lot of people but it definitely hurted him um I remember uh, watching, I believe uh, they did the uh, Dark Side of the Ring uh, little docu-series and they talk about the whole Chris Benoit situation. I did watch that. And when Eddie died, things really changed. And you, I've said this before, you will be surprised how someone can impact someone's life so much that when they're gone, they essentially, they're not the same person no more. And you can tell eddie was his anchor eddie was the thing that kept him i guess you can say stable-minded you know what i'm saying like that anchor of someone that you really care about that can help you and guide you through whatever you're going through they're gone now you're you're kind of you're just kind of in this limbo state and granted you can say well he has his wife he has his kids like that should be his anchor and you could say that but at the same time it's different when you know your your closest friend is also in the profession that you're in he's a wrestler as well so you can connect with someone different than your own family because they may not get it they may not understand and it's it's one of those unfortunate things where once eddie died a lot of people have said this it's like chris benoit he died a part of him died you can see in the video when they were doing the tribute to eddie and how people were getting emotional but you saw specifically and i remember this how chris benoit was so emotional bro like i had never seen him like tear up like that i didn't even think someone that is so vicious in the ring could have those type of emotions but he was boo who crying that wasn't acting that was how he felt he couldn't even really get the words out and that's that's a telltale sign that he was really hurting or whatnot so 
I got to put that out there because obviously I do think that played a part in his mental. This is where the mental side of things come into play. And then, um, you know, just just the whole situation of after everything happened and uh, the medical examiners doing their reports and they're, they're pretty much saying, you know, his CTE was very advanced and uh, he, you know, was 40 years old but had the mind of an 88 year old. You know what I'm saying? And for someone that's personally dealing with someone in my family, uh, my grandmother, uh, granted, she doesn't have CTE, but she, you know, she has uh, all uh, dementia. So a lot of times her mind works differently now. You know, she's talking to stuffed animals and stuff like that. And, you know, she's doing things that doesn't make sense. We've got to pretty much like baby proof uh, my grandmother's place because she'll turn on the stove. And don't remember turning on the stove, like a gas stove. And, you know, that could be dangerous. You know what I'm saying? You know, so we've had to kind of baby proof all these things because she's just doing things, not realizing what she's doing, not remembering what she's doing. And it's one of those things where I can relate in a sense of when your mind goes, everything else kind of follows. You may be able to pick up the pieces but everything else kind of follows and and that's what came with all those chair shots and all those diving head butts and you know it was there it was it was you know it, it eventually caught up to him you know and i don't think wwe really was aware of what was going on because it was always part of the wrestling business taking a stiff chair shot it was, it was kind of like a badge of honor but i don't think they realized or maybe they did know who knows and they just said now nah, we're just gonna keep you know keep the show on the road because at the end of the day we're trying to make money and no one else is going off the rails like you know to that point so it's like i think we're okay but honestly um i think what hurts him being remembered in a positive light especially in wwe is just the fact that he took two innocent people's lives that didn't really you know deserve it unfortunately you know his wife nancy and uh his uh his son uh daniel you know now he also he has you know another son david but luckily david wasn't there you know i believe if i remember correctly in the documentary i think he was at a family's house family member's house so he wasn't even there when everything went down you know and it's just one of those things where it's like it's 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 like damn like, how do you separate that? How do you separate someone committing such a heinous crime and we're supposed to still be like, well, he still was a fantastic wrestler, which we know, but it's, it's kind of hard to separate that. You Obviously, uh, I believe there's been reports that David wants his father to be remembered in, you know, potentially in the Hall of Fame in WWE. But I can tell you this now, WWE is all about money. More than ethics or anything else, WWE is about money. And investors would not be okay with that at all. And just from an ethical standpoint, I know he wants his father there. I know he would want his father to be remembered for the positive. But his last acts were so evil. Whether it was he was in his right mind or not, is one of those things where it's like they couldn't do that even if they wanted to. And I don't think they should. To be honest with you, I don't think they should. I don't think he should be remembered in the sense of his amazing career. I know that may sound harsh, but we got to also your career and your legacy is tied to your personal life. It, it is whether people want to admit it or not. A lot of times it is. And people are very selective on who they support and why they support them after they find out certain information. For example, and this is an extreme, but I'm putting it in trying to put it into context for those who may not understand why I say what I say. Say, for example, we've seen it. We see it all the time in, in the United States. Someone has some mental breakdown and they go on a killing rampage and they go around killing innocent people that have nothing to do with nothing. They just feel like, all right, I need to do this. And they're mentally not there. We know they're not there. They may have planned out everything, but we know there's something wrong. There's some screws loose. And are we supposed to be like, well, he did all this charity work prior to. He was a good person. He helped out the community. He just went off the rails one day and said, screw it. I'm going to kill a whole bunch of innocent people that has nothing to do with nothing. 
So we're supposed to remember the good, right? We're supposed to forget that other people's families are ruined because of his heinous and evil act, whether he kills himself or not. And we've seen it countless times, especially in the United States this year alone of people who are not right up in the head, or maybe they do know what they're doing and they just decide to snap. You know, so it's it's one of those things like, do we remember the good that they do? Do we glorify the good that they do? I'm sure there's people that want to remember them for bad, but no. What about the families that are affected? And that's why I say in the sense of Chris Benoit, I, you know, I appreciate what he's did in the ring. But honestly, no, his his legacy will forever be tarnished and tainted as pretty much someone that went off the deep end whether it was his own doing with you know in the sense of the, the type of punishment his brain was uh was taking gotta make sure my video good uh the type of punishment his brain was taking with all the chair shots and and headbutts and stuff like that that you can you can argue that but despite all of that despite having a brain of an 88 year old you can't ignore the fact that two people lives were cut short because of it so the question to answer the question do i feel like chris benoit should be remembered in wwe i know some people may disagree but no i don't yes of course the wrestling fans that got to watch him will know who he is and of, of course you can find the matches of some of his uh best matches on on the internet it's not even hard to find you can literally google it but do i think it should be something that you know is pushed on t television and social media no if you find his matches you can find them granted i don't to be honest with you ever since that incident i don't i don't really just go back and watch chris benoit matches not because i don't think he's in a fantastic wrestler it's just it, it it changes everything once you know how his story ended and the way it ended it's just like damn that changes everything i don't know if i can look and appreciate it the same way i did before all of this so and for me personally i don't think he should you know be glorified in a sense like of you know not glorified but you know remembered in the sense of what he did in wwe because all of that is kind of tainted now we know what he did we know he was a fantastic wrestler but at the same time it's not a it's, it's for me it's it's like well that's cool but he did do some messed up stuff and i know his son wants the good to be remembered for uh, you know for uh from what he's done in the business and i i get that that's his father at the end of the day and he you know he feels like that wasn't really him but at the end when it's all said and done a lot of other people may not feel like that and you know it's just one of those type of things where i'm like nah i think it's best wwe stay separate from it and you know if you choose to remember him for the good that's awesome but i don't think it should be a public platform that talks about it i think this should just be one of those water cooler situations damn chris benoit was a great wrestler it just sucks what he did and i think that's probably how it should be and probably will be nothing of a major a uh, situation where it's televised and it's talked about more so like between wrestling fans like damn Chris Benoit was a great fantastic person I understand why WWE doesn't really acknowledge him because I mean it's it, it sucks what he did at the end so comment down below let me know we can have that discussion do you guys feel like Chris Benoit should be uh either you know remembered by wwe or acknowledged by wwe in some capacity do you feel like wwe is doing the right thing and just kind of staying away from that and 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 kind of letting that be what it is you know and also let me know how do you guys feel about chris benoit's legacy you know how do you feel that what he did impacted it do you feel like it it should uh people should separate what he did and to his family um, and and kind of just separate that from his wrestling career or do you guys feel like it's one in the same at you know at the end of the day what he did tarnished everything that he had built for himself so but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 150k and i'm still getting the speed of youtube wrestling champion of the world 
appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.